show you a little bit about what Quilt can do for your team. First and most importantly, Quilt runs in your virtual private cloud. All of your data remains in your S3 buckets, and in fact, all the compute resources for Quilt run in your cloud as well. If you have a single sign-on provider, like one of the ones that you see here, that enables you to log into the Quilt catalog, and that's the first piece that I'm gonna show you. The key thing about the Quilt catalog is you choose which S3 buckets you would like to connect to Quilt, and each bucket then automatically will generate an overview for you that you're seeing here. You can see what kind of data is in there. You can get a preview of the actual data itself, all different file format types, Jupyter Notebooks, Parquet files. You can see which data is actually entering and leaving the warehouse. And the key thing here is that the documentation lives alongside your data and quilt. So I can have a data set with any schema, any files of any size, and any markdown or Vega visualizations or Jupyter Notebooks or Parquet files or CSVs that I have are accessible to any analyst or anybody who has access to your quilt catalog. And from a discovery standpoint, the really neat thing is that you can search not just for metadata, but for the actual content of S3 files. And you'll see here that the search result was in fact a notebook. This notebook is just a static HTML representation of what's in your S3 buckets. The next important thing is that Quilt supports reproducibility, which is to say that as your experiments mature over time, you can take a snapshot, an immutable snapshot, and I'm gonna show you a simple example of that here you'll see that this snapshot has a version control menu associated with it. And I can scrub back, hey, what did this data set look like on August 6th? And you'll see that now I rolled back to a specific time capsule in S3. And if as a data scientist, I now wanna work with this data, I have a really easy way of doing that. And I can use the code generated by the code panel here. And then in Jupyter, I'm gonna do what's called a browse. And the cool thing about browse is even if I have a terabyte size collection in S3, I only download what is called the Quilt Manifest, which allows you to interact with the data and see what's there without actually downloading the primary data itself. And you'll notice here for this datafeats.csv file that I have, it'll reveal the physical location of the data in S3. But if I wanna suck that data into Pandas and actually use it, I can just call Deserialize. And Deserialize will go out to S3. It will use the Quilt packaging for format to figure out which deserializer it should use. And then it will actually return that to me so that I can immediately start working with a data frame. And this works for all different data types. You can get a handle to a POSIX path, you can get bytes, and there's more on that in the Quilt docs. The last piece I'd like to show you is what can you do on the data quality side of things? So the important thing about a self-organizing data lake is that it gives you hooks with which to control data quality, all the way from swampy collections up to highly trusted data sets that you can build decisions on. And the way we do that is Quilt, with Quilt is that each data set can define an optional workflow. And when you select a workflow, it has certain requirements that are validated for which metadata you wanna to attach to that experiment. So the last thing I wanna show you in conclusion is that anybody obviously can interact with the Quilt catalog. Developers and data scientists can use the Quilt Python API and you can importantly have non-technical users participate in the quilt data warehouse just by dragging and dropping their data onto s3 and we'll talk about that in a future video but that at a very high level is what you can do with quilt